Hi, Odyssey Camper here. I've been using my new bed system for about eight months now, and I thought it was about time that I go over the materials I used and how I built it. Uh, when I set off on this project, I originally used a cot in the van, which was comfortable, but I wanted something a little wider. And I also wanted to be able to make use of the extra space on the side of the van when the door closes, get a little bit extra shoulder width. So what I set off to do is uh, build something with a couple goals in mind. First, I didn't want to use wood. And the reason is I'm allergic to pine and a lot of people have wood sensitivities. Uh, they're sensitive to chemically treated wood. So I wanted to use a different material. And what I settled on was Unistrut. And originally I thought, well, Unistrut will be light and it's also easy to work with. It bolts together. You need a minimal amount of tools to build something like this. That's all true although it didn't quite go together like I thought it would as far as being the right dimensions. Um, you can buy the Unistrut in 24 and 36 inch lengths, but most of this bed is 30 inches, and that's dictated by the space between the rear seat and the wall. And so to get to 30 inches, I actually had to use a hacksaw to cut a lot of it. The rest of it went together with a set of Allen wrenches and a couple of box wrenches. So walking around the back of the van, starting the back first, those of you that watch the channel for a while know that I use uh, Homer buckets to store my water and so usually I have, if I go out for an extended period, 10 gallons of water with me which lasts quite a, quite a while. And I wanted a safe place to put those. What I did is I built a hinge onto the back of the bed that goes over the top of the water buckets, keeps them from sliding sideways but in the event of a collision it'll keep them from flying forward or at least they'll break before everything comes forward. So it's kind of a safety thing. Uh, but doing this with the end of your bed would also give you the capability to have a pillow in the back and some place to read if you made it a little longer. So when I talk about this bed, what I'm really talking about is a system. In talking about this system, the first thing I have to discuss is the Unistrut. Unistrut is aluminum material that has a edge under the side, and there are all kinds of fasteners that will fit into this slot. There are also angled corner brackets that assist with building things, and it's really designed for industrial shelving and that kind of thing. Uh, but I find it easy to work with, and I'll put a parts list underneath this video to show you some of the pieces I used. But keep in mind, you don't have to build your bed the same way. I happen to have certain needs, and uh, I wanted something that was 30 inches wide so I could use my chair in the back. But if you're a young couple traveling in a van, then you can make this easily full width. There is one mistake I made, uh, well, at least one mistake that remains, <laughs> and that is where I put this vertical bar. I actually intended it to be here so I could expand the bed into a second module if I wanted, but I meant for the edges to hang over so that this wouldn't catch on your jeans or whatever when you're getting dressed. I have a cap on it, but my original intent was to extend this plank a little bit farther out uh, and do that on the whole, the whole bed. When I started building it, I started building it from the back and went forward and realized as I cut all the boards when I was done that I didn't leave them long enough to cover that. So, mistakes happen. Down at the bottom, I have the Unistrut fitting right over where the chair brackets are, and that allows you to run a cable through here to tie the bed down securely. And you can kind of see where those brackets were. I took out the plastic that was on the floor in order to hold that, and that keeps the bed from sliding forward or back when you're driving. And then after I had everything together, I noticed there's a little bit of sag in the middle. Depending on your weight, if you're uh, 180 pounds, you probably won't have any problem with sag. I'm uh, 250, so <laughs> there's a little bit of sag there. So I put a little extra adjustment in here with a piece of PVC pipe and a thread so I can turn the PVC pipe and thread it up tight, support the bed. And when you're done, it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. For the top, I used Trex composite wood. Now, yes, I didn't want to use wood, but this is wood and plastic mixed together, so the, the wood component is kind of sealed. It's a little on the heavy side, uh, but I still think I came out ahead over building a wood frame by using the Unistrut. And then holding everything together is stainless steel hardware. I used button heads. My mattress goes on top of this, uh, but I wanted you know something that was rounded so it wouldn't catch on the mattress, and no, you don't feel them once the mattress is in place. There actually are flat heads you could use in here, so you could have a flush uh, mount and just countersink the hole, run it down. But again, I was trying to make it as simple as possible so that anyone could duplicate this bed. So let me show you how these planks fasten on. I pulled up one of the planks on the bed so you can see how it fastens to the Unistrut. 
Again, I mentioned that there's a little groove under the edge of this. The edges kind of curve over on the unistrut. In fact, you can see it right here. That's a better example. So these fasteners are designed to fit down in the slot, and then when you tighten the screw, they rotate, pull up, and catch on those grooves. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Before I get to that, you might have noticed that there are numbers at the end of these planks, and that's so I can get them back in the same spot after I disassemble the bed. So in the off season, when I'm not traveling, I take those out, store them in the garage, um, and then if one gets damaged, it's easily replaced. The reason I have a gap between each slat is because you don't actually need all that support when you get in there. Uh, you don't have to have these touching. In fact, you could probably space them a little wider, but it allows air circulation. So if you're using a permeable mattress, foam that's open cell or something, it allows it to breathe a little bit. In the winter time, it'll actually get cold. Um, I use an air mattress in the winter time, and the air mattress will insulate it to a degree, but as it warms up, you get a little condensation. So it's good to have some breathability through there once you get going again. And then you can also see how I trim the corner to make maximum use of all the edges. Now, do they line up perfectly? No, because even though I cut them perfectly, once you put the unistrut uh, clamps back in, you might, because of the clearance in the hole, be off a little bit side to side. This end view shows you how those nuts align inside and fit in the unistrut. These are actually larger because the bolts holding the corners together are larger than the bolts that are holding the planks on. These are screws that are holding the planks on. These are heavier duty bolts to hold the frame together. And again, these are manufactured components. You just buy the component and uh, go on your way. So let's take a look at the supports on the back of this. I'm gonna fold the folding section up out of the way. I can go all the way forward and pull the buckets out. They're empty because I'm not traveling right now. I don't need water in them. And you can see how I made the unistrut legs in the back. And I wanted some extra stability to keep this from rocking side to side. So I put on these adjustable feet. They actually allow you to move um, to two different mounting positions. So you can get a little bit of adjustability out of it if you're on an incline. There's a telescoping section that you can buy of unistrut that could fit in this place. And originally I was going to do that, but I use uh, ramps to level the van. I don't really need adjustment in here, but it would be neat in some stealth situations to be able to adjust the level of your bed without having to look like you're camping there, without putting ramps under the wheels. So I may upgrade later on to uh, telescoping strut should I decide to carry this any farther, um, but know that it's available. Now one thing about Unistrut is it's fairly expensive uh, when you compare it with wood. But what I like about it is you can disassemble and reassemble. Uh, so you're not banging nails out, damaging the wood, trying to take wood screws out. You can just unbolt it, reconfigure it. If I want to make the bed wider, uh, I have a provision in the design to do that. So I can just add some cross pieces, feed over near the other door, and the bed can be wider. So it's fairly flexible and you pay for that flexibility. And the specialized pieces like these feet, I think these were $18 a piece, which is kind of, I think, kind of ridiculous for what they are. You may find it cheaper at your local uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. I went to Lowe's and they did carry Unistrut, but they only carried the steel and I wanted aluminum and they didn't have all the pieces that I wanted, like they do on McMaster car. So going back and looking at it, I'd probably do it a little bit different. Uh, some of the brackets, I may... Uh, here drill into the frame instead of using an actual bracket but again I wanted to show that it's fairly easy to build this stuff and there are custom pieces available so if crafting things isn't you know building things isn't your thing but you want a bed in your van anybody could do this trust me if, if I can put it together you can uh, this is one example of where I had to trim the piece I had to actually cut this with a hacksaw in order to get it to the right length so the feet are the legs back here Possibly the legs in the front, depending on how high you want the bed. And then side to side are the pieces you're going to have to cut. The straight pieces, these one foot sections are purchased. And then the main six foot section going to the front is purchased. This uh, is essentially a seven foot bed. It's a little bit longer than seven feet when you add the ends onto it. And then the wood actually at the top hangs over and gives a couple more inches. So it's going to be long enough for just about anybody. I stack pillows up next to the door there, and so if I lay on my right side, I can just kind of put my hand up on the pillows, and it's, it's very comfortable. It's as comfortable as my bed at home. 
This is the Unistrut nut that fits on the end of the bolt and you can see where it has a couple edges on there and it's rounded on the corner and it's designed so that when you tighten it down it rotates and then catches in the Unistrut. And then those grooves will catch underneath like that. And so you can tighten this down uh, pretty tightly and it's not going to damage anything and it'll keep those boards from moving around. One of the questions I get is, do, does this rattle around when I'm driving? And I don't get any sound out of it. About the only potential for sound is where those hinges are in the back. Uh, but I usually have my sleeping bag on top of this, so the weight keeps them from rattling and you wouldn't hear it if it did. That rattles would drive me crazy, so I guess that's another requirement that the bed doesn't rattle. So then you would t set these boards down in place and then just tighten the bolts. So easy to disassemble. I can stack all these components on top of each other so they don't take up much space. I've uh, folded the Unistrut frame, so I, I made one modification, which is where these bolts go in. I have another screw on top of it, and that's just a drilled and tap hole. And that way I can lock this into place so that it's not going not gonna to rotate. But when I store it, I take out that screw and I can just push on the leg and fold it up under the frame and then store it against the wall. And then these two struts on the bottom come off. You'll notice I put tape on the other one. I was starting to cover up the primer. <laughs> I had purple stuff dripping down. I just haven't gotten around to making it look pretty yet. Eight months and I haven't gotten around to making it look pretty. But someday. Uh, it's functional. It's durable. Like I said, I weigh 250 pounds and it doesn't bend at all. I experimented with other systems in the beginning. One thing I did was take the Unistrut frame and then stretch metal pipe strap across it and an X pattern and I thought that would give me a nice spring bed underneath and that might work if you weigh 130 150 pounds but for me it actually started to bow the frame in from the sides so I had to disassemble the whole thing and come up with another system and that's where this uh, Trex board comes from this stuff's fairly cheap as far as manufactured boards go I think they were $14 for an 8 foot piece and I needed four of them if I'm not mistaken and then when you go back to the, the rear, you can kind of see the, the footboard that I added in the middle there, just to give a little support. Um, I'm not quite that tall, but, you know, you move around your sleeping bag, you don't want your feet to fall off the end. Uh, and there's many variations you could do back there. You don't even have to do a hinge section if you don't want something behind there. I kind of like the option. And like I said, if I hinged it forward, one more plank, I'd be able to set that up in the back and then use it as a backrest. And then maybe you wouldn't need the seat. So... If I was going to do a double uh, system, if I were going to make this bed the full 48 inches between the, the fenders, I would probably put two sections in the back, uh, one 30 and one the remainder 18, and you could up, fold them up and down individually. So if somebody wanted to sit up and read, they could do that, and the other person wanted to sleep, they could do that. So that's the system I used. Again, I'll put links down at the bottom. The main one you want to look at is the McMaster link, which brings you to... Uh, all the materials and you'll see all the variations and how simple this stuff is to put together. It's like a big erector set. If you don't have a lot of tools um, and you know you don't want to buy a lot of tools, about all you'll need is a hacksaw, set of allen wrenches, uh, some screws, again you can get those in McMaster, and that's about it to assemble the whole system. Uh, box wrenches. So a set of box wrenches. If you don't carry those, if you don't have those, if you're not that kind of person that's carrying tools around, then just uh, talk to a neighbor. I guarantee at least one of your neighbors or somebody you know has a set of box wrenches. So that's the bed system. You don't have to build it the same way I did, but um, that might give you a starting point to work from rather than all these plywood beds that are out there. Plywood is it's really heavy. It flexes unless you buy the real thick stuff. Uh, you have to be a, a fair carpenter, have some skills to be able to put it together. And I don't think it's the best system for everybody. But looking around, I didn't find any other construction methods that I thought were suitable uh, for the van. I guess one other thing I'd mention is that the way I put the seat, I designed it so that the bed goes up against the seat. So the seat supports it from coming forward. There's a steel frame in the seat. And also the floor supports will hold it. So in the event of a collision, it's not going to, uh, hopefully, <laughs> take me out. Um, but it's restrained as best as it could could be and then you can add cables at the bottom to hold it So hopefully you find this useful I'll let you in on a little clue. Uh, this is going to be about the end of Odyssey camper phase two and the reason is I've got a new van I'll Tell you about it later